Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to I Can Multiply Positive and Negative Fractions. This is on page 96, if you're following along with your Glencoe Course 3 textbook, and it's lesson 2-3. Make sure you're taking notes, pausing when you need to, and trying some things on your own. Write down questions that you have so that we can go over them in class. Do not let fractions freak you out, okay? Fractions are just parts of wholes. This chapter 2 is a lot of that. And then just remain confident, you're going to do great. Starting with multiplying positive and negative fractions. So our first rule, and we want to write this down, multiplying fractions. To multiply fractions, we simply multiply the numerators and we multiply the denominators. So we really work straight across. 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 5 is 15. So then we simplified 8 fifteenths. There are some tricks that you can do. You can multiply straight across, but we also can cross cancel if we want to. So on this example one, 4 ninths times 3 fifths, um, we're going to show two different ways to multiply this. So if I have 4 ninths times 3 fifths, I could multiply straight across, and I get 12, 3 times 4, over 45, which is 9 times 5. But then I have to do it in simplest form. So I have to know that, oh, 3 goes into both of these. So I divide both the top and the bottom by 3. You have to do the same number, because it's really like I'm dividing by 1, which won't change the value. 3 goes into 12 4 times. 3 goes into 45 15 times. Or, the other way is that you can find the greatest common factor. A greatest common factor of the, of the common factors um, that it has. So, like, find the factor other than one that they share that's the highest of the numbers that they share. So, greatest, meaning the biggest, common, meaning they share, and factor, something that can go into it. So, if I have four-ninths times three-fifths, I look for a numerator and denominator that share a factor. 4 and 5 do not share any common factors other than 1, so I can't simplify those ahead of time. But 3 and 9 do. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 9 three times. So they shared a factor of 3, so I simplified those. Now I'm able to multiply straight across. 4 times 1 is 4. 3 times 5 is 15. Notice how I get the same answer. I just simplified second in this one and I simplified first in this one. So pick what works best for you. I'll do a little bit of both. These numbers are small, one fourth times two thirds, and they don't share, well, two and four share factors, so I could simplify ahead of time. But I'm going to go straight across. One times two is two, four times three is twelve. So the issue is now I do have to remember to simplify. 2 and 12 share a factor of 2. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 12 six times. So that's 1 sixth. Here I'm going to cross cancel first. Because I don't really want to deal with 12 times 20. So I cross cancel. 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 20 four times. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 12 four times. So I'm left with 1 fourth times 1 fourth. And I'm able to multiply the top. 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 4 is 16. So 5 twelfths times 3 twentieths is 1 sixteenth. Now when we throw negatives in the bunch. So negative 5 six times 3 eighths. First thing you want to know is this study tip. If the negatives on the side, on the top, or the bottom, they're all equivalent. That all means the same thing. Where that negative is doesn't matter. If there were a negative, you need to know that that is a positive, And our integer rules still apply here. So I'm going to rewrite this. 
negative 5, 6 times 3 eighths. First thing I'm going to do is realize that's a negative times a positive, which I know is negative. So I know my product's going to be negative. I'm going to cross cancel. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 6 two times. And multiply across. So negative 5 times 1 is a negative 5. 2 times 8 is 16. So it's a negative 5 sixteenths. Positive times a negative is a negative. So I'm going to have my negative answer. And I know that 4 goes into 4 once. 4 goes into 8 two times. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 9 three times. So I really have 2 thirds times negative 1 over 1. So I get a negative 2 over 3. Over here, negative 3 fifths times 7 ninths. So I have a negative times a positive for a negative answer. I could cross cancel now or do it or simplify later. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 9 3 times. 5 and 7 don't share factors other than 1, so negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. 5 times 3 is 15, so negative 7 fifteenths. All right. Now, mixed numbers. So when we have mixed numbers, we have a rule that says we need to, to multiply them, rename them as improper fractions. So that's where we need to know that our whole... So now we're going to cross-cancel. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 9 3 times. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 8 4 times. This can get really messy, so it's important that you keep track and maybe rewrite when you realize you're getting a little bit too obscure. So I have 3 over 1 times 4 over 1, which then is the same as 12 over 1, or just 12. Try these. So change them to mixed numbers first. So again, it's 1 and 1 half. Multiply and then add. So that's 3 halves times, do 1 and 2 thirds. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5 thirds. Cross cancel. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 3 once. Rewrite because it's messy. I have 1 half times 5 over 1 or 5 over 2. Simplifying, here's the trick. 2 goes into 5 2 times for 4. 5 is 1 more of the 1 half. So that's 2 and 1 half. Only one of these ones needs to be switched. So this is 5 sevenths. We do 1 and 3 fifths. Change it to an improper fraction. 5 times 1 is 5. Plus 3 is 8. 8 fifths. Cross cancel. 5 was in 5 once. 5 was in 5 once. We're left with 8 over 7. So 7 goes into 8 one time with 1 remaining. Alright, so word problem. Roller coaster. Roller coaster at amusement park is 160 feet tall. A new roller coaster that's built is two and three fifths times the height of the existing roller coaster. What is the height of the new roller coaster? So we're looking for H, the height of the new roller coaster. When we know that the previous roller coaster is 160, we also know that the new roller coaster, H, is two and three fifths times the height of the existing roller coaster. So I know roller coaster is 160. The height of the new one is 2 and 3 fifths of the current. So since I have C and C, I'm going to replace that value. So I know that the height of the new one is 
2 and 2 thirds, or sorry, 3 fifths times 160. So I need to change this. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 3 is 13. So I get 13 over 5 times 160, and that's over 1. It's a whole number. So now I can cross cancel or multiply straight across if I really want to. You can decide what you're going to do. So I come cross cancel. So I do 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 160 32 times. So then I'm left with 13 over 1 times 32 over 1, which is the same as 416. So my answer, to not get too much more messy, is that the new, the height of the new roller coaster is 416 feet, which makes sense because it's more than two times and almost three times as much as the original roller coaster. How about this next one? A piece of lumber is four and one fourth feet long. If you need a piece of lumber that is two thirds the size, how long of a piece do you need? So we need a piece that is two thirds of the lumber we have, and the lumber we have is four and one fourth. So replace L with L. So the piece of lumber we need is two thirds as much or multiplied of four and one fourth. Switch to an improper. Two thirds times seventeen fourths, four times four plus one. Cross cancel, two goes into two once, two goes into four twice. Multiply across, 17 over 6. Simplify, 6 goes into 17 two times with 5 of the 6 remaining. So our answer is 2 and 5 sixth feet. Alright, last thing. So dimensional analysis is the process of including units of measurement when you compute. So we use this to check our answers and make sure our answers are reasonable. We won't want to be looking for um, minutes and we end up with miles, and so on and so forth. So we use the information on the left that Marine One's helicopter is used to transport the president and vice president, um, VH-71, and has a cruising speed of 172 miles per hour. It has 200 square feet of cabin space, almost double the previous. So if we're looking at Suppose a VH-71 is traveling at its cruising speed, 172. How far will it go in 130, one hour, one and three-fourths hours? So we're looking for the distance equals the rate multiplied the time. We don't know the distance. We're looking for how far. So we know that the distance is 172 miles per hour, and they're traveling for an hour and three-fourths of an hour. So we do 172 miles in an hour times one and three-fourths hours. So we convert our one and three-fourths to an improper fraction, seven-fourths, and multiply. We cross-cancel the four, goes into four once, goes 172, 43 times. Notice our hours cancel out and we do 43 times 7, and we're left with a mileage answer, which makes sense, since that's what we were looking for. And so at its cruising speed of 172 miles per hour, the VH-71 will travel 301 miles in an hour and three quarters of an hour. All right, so do your best to show your work. Try to stay neat um, and check your answers for reasonableness. See you soon.